Hello, my name is Irini Angelidaki and I'm going to talk about biorefineries. I will show you how we can use biotechnological processes to convert wastes and residues to fuels, products and fertilizers. Nowadays, the main source of energy and many chemical products comes from fossil fuels. This practice seems not to be sustainable. We face many challenges due to the massive use of fossil fuels. Uh, the world population increases. We expect to be more than 10 billion people on this planet by year 2050. And uh, the fossil fuels emit a lot of greenhouse gases and the greenhouse gas emissions increase and this imposes huge climate change uh, challenges. Moreover, fossil fuels are limited source and therefore we concer have concerns about the energy supply security. And what is biomass? Biomass is simply stored solar energy. We have uh, carbon dioxide captured with water through photosynthesis to produce biomass. This is the chemical, chemical formula we use for biomass. Then when we combust biomass with oxygen, the same amount of carbon dioxide is released. So in that way, we have the closed carbon dioxide cycle when we use biomass, as opposed to the open cycle when we use fossil fuels. Our main goal is to use waste and residues and not food crops, uh, which can um, be used for food and, uh, and feed. And there are pl plenty of resources available that can be used for this purpose. That means convert waste and residues from a load to the society to a useful uh, product, useful resource. And I can mention several examples of underutilized biomasses. We have coffee processing. By this, we discard 99% of the biomass waste. This is not good enough. We can indeed do better than that. We have many examples. Manures in Denmark at the moment, only 10% or less are used for biogas production. So we really have to increase our uh, utilization of the biomass. And um, the solution to these challenges I mentioned before are to utilize as much part, as larger part of the biomass as possible. We can really do better than that. We cannot continue wasting a lot of resources. Uh, and then I would say we should use bi residual biomass and waste rather than agricultural crops. And then we have to do it in a smart way. We can use it uh, in a biorefinery approach. Biorefinery is a parallel to petrochemical uh, refinery, which was uh, biorefinery is a term that came in the 90s. And um, it's an approach where we use multi feedstock and multi processes to produce a number of different products. And in that way, we aim to maximize the value of uh, the biomass that is utilize the market needs and also the availability of specific substrates uh, to get the best economy out of it. I will show you here a, a biorefinery we have been working with. This is the rapeseed plant. We have been working with the rapeseed biorefinery where the rapeseed crop tra traditionally we use only the oil seeds to extract oils and then convert them to biodiesel. So in that way, Actually, we use only 20% of the plant's energy content. We have, however, developed a biorefinery concept where we use also the straw part. And um, in that way, we use the straw part to produce bioethanol, biohydrogen, biogas. And by this way, we could add additional 27% of the plant's energy content to use that from the plant. And moreover, we could return the nutrients from the plant as fertilizers back to the soils. And also we could have some very interesting smart products extracted from there like biopesticides, fatty acids and animal feed. So that shows really that there is a lot of uh, residues, biomass, we're wasting at the moment. Another very interesting example is uh, biogas. Uh, biogas um, treats organic wastes, um, slurries, manures, they come into here and uh, they are converted to biogas, which is typically consisting of 50 to 70 percent methane uh, and the rest is carbon dioxide. So the typical utilization is through a gas motor to convert it to electricity and heat. However, if we could remove the carbon dioxide from the biogas, 
that means upgrade the biogas to more than 95% methane, then we increase, we expand the portfolio of applicability of, of biogas to be able to use it as, a, as a vehicle fuels or to put it in a, the natural gas grid. And uh, a very smart way to do it is to capture the carbon dioxide with hydrogen um, by using some microorganisms, hydrogenotrophic methanogens, which are microorganisms converting uh, hydrogen carbon dioxide through this reaction uh, to methane. They are, they are microorganisms belonging to the domain archaea. So they capture the carbon dioxide with hydrogen. So where do we find the hydrogen? Uh, we can use residual uh, renewable energy, electricity, to electrolyze water to produce hydrogen, which then can bind the carbon dioxide from biogas to produce methane. And um, um, we can use either windmill excess uh, energy or solar energy because the wind is not always blowing when we need the electricity. Sometimes it does not blow, so we can store uh, the electricity in the form of biogas. So we can see it as energy storage solution. So it's an integration of the windmill technologies with the biogas technologies. So here are the results. We have been working with this. Here is a reactor. And we inject the hydrogen through hollow fiber membranes. And um, they deliver then the hydrogen in the liquid phase where we get a very bubbleless uh, distribution of the gas in the liquid. And here you can see the reactor. And here are the microorganisms responsible for the conversion of the hydrogen to uh, the carbon dioxide to methane. And here you can see we applied very high gas flows uh, as shown as gas retention times. We applied um, as, as much as one hour retention time, which corresponds to a very high gas flow. We could co get conversions as high as 95% methane in the produced biogas, which is really very good. So another uh, way to do it, another application, is to capture the carbon dioxide in biogas to make it to succinic acid. Succinic acid is a very useful platform chemical which has many uh, applications. It can be used for um, uh, from pharmaceutical applications, bipolymers, resins, coatings, solvents. So we have a number of applications, so it's a very useful chemical. And we use a microorganism which can convert sugars uh, together with carbon dioxide to um, succinic acid and at the same time uh, upgrade the biogas to almost 100% methane. So you can see here we have applied algae hydrolysate as a supply for the sugars, but can be any other kind of uh, biomass resource that we can. And together with the biogas, uh, here you can see the, the red dots are the carbon dioxide which are captured with, with the reaction and are converted to succinic acid. So the result of this was we got very high yields of uh, succinic acid, almost 85% of succinic acid. And at the same time, we upgraded our biogas to almost 100% methane. So the bioenergy and biofuels are not new. However, we continue with our research and development. Thank you very much for your attention.